everyone, welcome to another edition of Virana Dialogues with me, Vinay Tiwari, in association with the Exchange for Media. I have somebody with me who leads an industry that's possibly something that all of you have consumed. Each one of us used it, each one of us aspires for it, and some of us find multiple uses for it as well. Uh, I have with me Suparna Mitra, CEO of the Watches and Wearables Division for Titan, a brand that is iconic in India, perhaps one of the most well-known brands uh, that you could imagine, a brand which I have grown up watching and even consuming. So, Parna, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, we're meeting in slightly difficult times. They're improving. Uh, but certainly, uh, you represent an industry which possibly would have had a biggest impact of what happened, not just in 2020, but it repeated itself in a much bigger form, say, in 2021. Uh, so, just to kick it off, my first question. Uh, for a brand like Titan, that pretty much was the king of, of, of a particular section and, and everybody aspired to have that brand. The last two years would have changed a lot. Uh, and in that way, how do you see Titan changing its, uh, you know, the way you, you've done business uh, and the way you see the rest of the year and the coming years spanning out? Thanks, Vinay. Thanks for this opportunity. Yeah, uh, this brand, uh, Titan, as well as all the other brands of uh, Titan company in the watches and wearable space like uh, Sonata, Fast Track, Xylus, we are the market leaders, have been for the last three decades and more, and uh, enjoy an enviable 50% uh, value uh, market uh, share. Uh, yes, COVID um, wave one in 2020 was a big, big uh, dampener. And it was for the entire country, as you know, the, you know, the full lockdown and everything had come to a standstill. And at that point, we were actually feeling a little nervous saying that, uh, uh, how will the country recover? How will consumers come back? What will be the reason why uh, consumers will come back to a discretionary and non-essential category like uh, watches? If you remember the last year, the whole conversation was on essentials and non-essentials. And uh, it seemed uh, like a frivolous, maybe even a, a, a politically incorrect thing to say that, you know, I want to buy some, you know, an object of beauty of ownership. So it was a slow climb back last year. Uh, there were a lot of um, reasons that we created in order to get consumers back. For example, we did this uh, whole thing of let's get India ticking. And that was a, uh, it was not a particular brand or even a particular category. It was just to make everyone think that if each of us are not doing our bit, especially the people like us who are in the consuming class. If we are not doing our bit, how will the economy come back on track? How? The economy runs on consumers and producers. And if consumers come back, then producers are back and so on and so forth. So that was one of the things. And uh, then we did things like, you know, we did this whole thing on gifting, you know, occasions and uh, moments and relationships. I think one of the big lessons of COVID uh, wave one and uh, separately wave two has been that, you know, we think of many things as precious in our lives, but actually it's the people around us, the relationships, the people that we care about. Those are the real precious things. And in a scenario where there hasn't been much travel, uh, we haven't been able to go out and celebrate and, you know, many occasions have come and gone, many milestones have been missed. I think gifting has been one thing that uh, you know, is continuing and people want to express their love and uh, affection to their uh, near and dear ones. So that is another, uh, you know, big thing that has helped our recovery. Overall, we were quite happy with our recovery uh, in, say, Jan, Feb, March quarter, because after almost nine months of uh, not doing that well, we were on in a good place. And then, of course, COVID-2 happened and, and April second half of April and May, you know, for the entire country, it was brutal. It was just so hard. And of course, cons your consumption also came to a grinding halt. And then now uh, I think in this, uh, from June a little bit and certainly in July, we are really seeing that um, people are uh, wanting to come back. They are wanting to get into the category. In within the category brands, which have a lot of trust like Titan, they tend to gain because when people are coming back into consumption, they go to trusted, familiar brands because that's what gives them assurance. 
we have a large retail network and our network is uh, up and running with the best safety standards. Uh, and the difference from last year to this year, this year we are also saying that all our uh, sales staff at the stores are also vaccinated. So there are a lot of things that we've done as a company, as a division. Our brands have reached out to consumers in different ways. But, but you know, overall it's been a roller coaster of a ride. Uh, we were down in the terms, we recovered, and then there was the next big blow, and now we are in the next phase of recovery. I, I mean, actually, your answer kind of partially answered my next question, which was that you said yourself that watches and maybe wearables are perceived to be non-essential in terms of the category, and people wouldn't really go in as the first choice option if you were passing through a difficult like the, the, the one we've had in the last two years. Uh, and that, of course, changes the challenges, and you've told us uh, what those challenges are. Uh, but then uh, the reality is, Superna, that, not, they, that both watches and wearables are also a very occasion-driven industry, which means, I mean, the bulk of uh, business or whatever comes from people actually going ahead and being part of occasions. You go and attend somebody's wedding, you actually have a birthday party, you have graduation ceremonies, you have stuff happening in college with, or a farewell party at college. None of that has happened in the last two years. And actually, in the way things are going, uh, that fear of uh, you know big gatherings is going to continue, perhaps, to have these formal occasions reducing. And hence, the actual need for gifting, people have been able to avoid gifting. I mean, if I can use that word, if, if I don't have to give it, I don't. If I, in, in, in a normal time, if you're invited to a party or a wedding, you would have no option but to carry a gift along, right? Uh, that I'm sure is a, is a completely different challenge. I mean, this occasion-driven activity is not going to revive so soon, even now, because the third wave looms uh, and there are warnings already being issued. So, uh, yes, um... The formal and large gatherings have come down. Uh, there are two or three things that uh, are actually helping the situation uh, in, in this context. One is that uh, there has been an unprecedented boom in wearables. And that has also come because uh, a lot of wearables, whether they're smartwatches or, or smart bands, are about fitness. And I don't think the, there has been this much interest in, uh, in people for their interest their own health and fitness ever as it has been in the last one and a half years. So there have been a lot of uh, uh, huge demand on that side, uh, especially on the smartwatches and band side, and that has also helped us. I think the second point is that while larger gatherings have not happened, and I'll give you the example of something like a wedding, you know, there would be weddings where 500 people would be invited. Today, you can, I mean, I don't know the exact number now, but normally there would be 50 or 100 that would be, uh, you know, allowed. So what happens is that uh, in a lot of times, the amount of money that you would have liked to spend, uh, a larger share actually comes to categories like watches, jewelry, because those are things that you would give away to the bride, to the groom. And we see that. In fact, even in this uh, little bit of window we saw in June, uh, mid of June onwards, till mid of July, where there were a lot of wedding dates, we saw a good uptick in the demand of wedding watches. And interestingly, we saw almost a 20% increase in the average price. And that goes back saying that, you know, somewhere that budget gets redistributed. Uh, so yes, uh, you know, over Overall, it is a challenge, but within that, these are some of the silver linings that yes, people who are buying watches uh, for gifting, whether it is a uh, wedding or other occasions, they are being a little more generous in their budgets because there are not that many things to spend money on. You know, like a wedding would be a big location, a honeymoon, you know, a lot, a lot of travel, all of that is now kind of of not possible. So people are uh, redirecting it to things that, uh, two that be there. Two quick questions come from what you said. There was, I, I was, I, I mean, I followed some bit of what, uh, you know, Titan had planned earlier and I was very intrigued by that. And I wanted to ask you if you think today that that particular, uh, in, you know, scheme or, or, or concept that you began was, in your view, was that a success or not? Something like, for instance, self-gifting. I remember Titan pushed the idea of self-gifting a lot last year. Uh, you know, possibly as a field would think because you were passing through a very difficult time and everybody was holed up at home and not feeling very good about themselves. Uh, today, would you say self-gifting worked? To, uh, was that a success? If you, would you call that a success to the kind of targets that you set for yourself? Um, we Okay, let's put it this way. It is a more evolved concept to gift yourself. It's not a standard uh, concept and that is why it makes for interesting advertising. 
That's right. uh, having said that, and uh, you know, I was just reviewing, uh, we do a lot of programs around birthdays and anniversaries of our customers, of our uh, loyalty club customers and uh, in our retail stores. And that percentage of sales that come from birthdays and anniversaries has taken a big jump from say 1920 to 2021. And even in the first two months, I would say it's uh, seeing a further jump. Uh, so self-gifting, somewhat of an evolved concept, maybe some people do it, but gifting in general, and especially gifting to close people, like, you know, birthdays could also be self-birthdays, could be spouse birthdays, could be children's birthdays, but um, giving oneself or somebody in the family, giving, uh, you know, a member of the family, a really nice, fabulous watch uh, for a birthday, it, it makes for a classic timeless gift. So that is continuing and similarly for anniversaries. I see. No, I mean, uh, I, I know Suparna businesses uh, and especially, you know, complicated businesses, difficult businesses like the ones that you are in, obviously have a way more nuanced and a more structured approach to it. But I approach a lot of the questions that I ask from a very human behavior point of view, because I believe that ultimately, irrespective of what we learn, whether we read Peter Drucker or we learn in a, you know, in an A grade college, ultimately it's about human behavior. Uh, and one of the things that has always intrigued me is that when, uh, people perceive a particular brand, how they perceive it makes a big difference in the kind of decision they make. Now for me, uh, and for a lot of people, I guess in India, Titan was a brand that had its image of being a robust brand. I mean, the common word you would say is a lot of good, you take it. It's good, it's good, it's good. You know, those kind of words you would always hear. Uh, because if somebody would ask, just a peer review, ki kaun si gadi le, they would say Titan. Le. That's how we uh, brought up. Uh, now, that particular concept has slightly changed, which means, that being a very strong legacy brand can become possibly a bit of a handicap when you're trying to compete with, say, global natures where snob value takes precedence. Uh, today in the watches division, I mean, nobody now buys a watch to see the time. I mean, cell phones are providing the same service, right? It's moved on to being an accessory or maybe a show-off piece or something that you just show off and say, oh, look, this is the one. It's a collector's item more than a, you know, a convenience item. So when you have something like that, do you believe that Titan's legacy of being a very strong uh, you know, legacy brand becomes a barrier to trying to reinvent yourself to being a more, uh, you know, aspirational, expensive niche segment. So this is a very interesting question. And it's the kind of thing that we employ and, uh, you know, a lot of deploy a lot of our time in kind of uh, solving for this intellectual challenge. There are two parts to it. One is that there is uh, definitely in India, you know, this great aspiration towards foreign brands across categories, right? And watches is a category where, in fact, almost all of our competition is, they're all international brands. Uh, second point is that the fact that we are known as excellent watchmakers actually goes in our favor because, uh, you know, the horology, the science, the trust that comes from knowing watches, uh, even like I said, the retail network or the service network, if anything happened to a Titan watch, or even if it was just about changing your battery every two or three years, I know where to go to. I know I will get, you know, a qualified technician who will open it, put it back together. And so there is all of that that helps us. The fact is that there is aspiration for international brands. And number two is that there is a big premiumization drive that's going on. And again, it's across categories. It's certainly true for our category where, you know, Maybe 10 years back, 5,000 was considered a big thing, you know, like an expensive watch. Today, people buy 15, 20,000 watches with, you know, not, no big consideration. It's just like a very normal. And I think that's um, something that we had taken uh, cognizance of a few years back. So we have also been on the premiumization journey. Uh, in Feb this year, in Feb 2020, we launched the highest priced Titan watch at 1,95,000. This is a not a gold watch. We have gold watches, watches made of gold under our sub-brand Nebula, which is at five, six, seven lakhs. But then there is a certain value of gold because there's a weight of gold and a cost of gold. As a watch, uh, we made um, 200 limited edition pieces of this uh, fantastic uh, marvel of engineering called uh, Titan Edge Mechanical and a hundred each in each design. And uh, it sounds like, ye kitne log hai jo titan, do ki ghadi, titan how, how does it all put together? It does. There are enough watch uh, connoisseurs who 
actually they have a lot of other swiss watches and they now bought into titan because they felt that the mastery the workmanship the horological excellence of this um, you know one piece was really worth it there were also a lot of titan what i would call upgraders people who bought watches maybe the titan edge or the titan ceramic edge at 25000 and they're like i know this brand i love this brand i'm ready for this watch i'll go get one so we've had this this one watch is important not just because it you know the number of pieces we sell sold but it's because it broke the mental barrier in our head as well as in the consumer's head on what a titan what is a premium watch uh, that a titan watch can uh, command and why the why comes from a whole bunch of things that comes together it's a, it's one of the slimmest mechanical watches and right. it's beautiful it's slim it's mechanical like i said it's a piece to treasure so there are all these trends so we are also having that but we are also having a lot of 3000 4000 5000 rupee watches because that's where the bulk of the market lies and we are an inclusive brand i think that's the other thing about the emotional quotient of the brand is that a lot of brands and a lot of uh, luxury brands their trick is in on being exclusive and so consumers want to somehow enter the club for us we always been inclusive and it's not about the price point it's just that we are you know the way indians are we will welcome everybody to our house we will welcome everybody to our store and inclusivity gives it a certain warmth and a certain comfort but i think titan has also stood for a certain level of class and these two seemingly opposite things like class can be seen as a little more cold or if it is very warm it can be seen as a little more mass but when you combine class and warm you are in that zone what i call the titan zone where there is um, yes it's a legacy brand but there is enduring quality to that legacy it's not a legacy that has a uh, an expiry date it's a legacy that's building on itself so actually uh, again very interestingly you, know, you said two things that would have been my next questions and uh, you know i this particular watch that you mentioned which cost 1.95 lakh rupees was one of my specific questions what i was most intrigued by was this look anybody who's buying a watch which is close to 2 lakhs or more is not a price conscious consumer there's no way a price conscious consumer will look at Uh, something say even between say maybe ten to twenty thousand, but not more than that. So if you see, you know, I mean, every time that I've gone to a mall or a shop, and I overhear conversations, I see the first thing the salesman asks is, "Sir, what is your range?" That's the first question the salesman asks when a person looks unsure and not very sure of what he or she wants. The salesman inevitably asks range, "What is it?" And then when the guy specifies his range, he will give him four or five options or her four or five options, and he chooses one of them. Now, anybody who's buying something more than one and a half lakhs, two lakhs is not that. What is your range? What is the consumer? now if with that specification in mind the international brands obviously also cost around the same or maybe a little bit more here or there if even if the price goes up to 3 or 4 lakhs in that concept the my question specifically was this is cost the only way to premiumize if there's a word like that a particular brand uh, one way of i mean cosmetics for instance thrives on the idea of making something cost heavy so that it looks premium it may have exactly the same components as somebody else has but it thrives on costing Uh, in watches or wearables, for instance, is cost the only way to make it premium? Because if that is the case, or if that's not the case, then the legacy brand would weigh heavy on trying to get people away from not showing up and saying, "Look, I've got a Swiss this brand or a, or an American that brand." Is cost the only way to premiumize a brand? No, no, no. Cost is certainly not the only way, and uh, the category of watches is also interesting because uh, consumers buy watches for. three or four need states they come from three or four need states and the like you established right in the beginning it is not about uh, time keeping right so one need state is style accessorization you know completing a look uh and that was a very prominent uh, dis, uh, need state in like the pre covid days when you had different occasions you had to go to work you had to look the part uh so you would you know wear a certain if you were a man you would wear a certain kind of shirt or suit or shoes or a watch or if you were uh, you know going for a wedding or if you were going for a weekend brunch you had to look the part from top to toe and the watch would be an accessory so there is that space which is more about fashion style etc then there is the space of uh, 
uh, status, which is really what is, how does your brand get pegged in terms of some kind of ladder of uh, premiumness or luxury or uh, et cetera. So that's the uh, second need state that comes from. And the third one, uh, which is self-expression, which is neither about fitting a certain ensemble look, nor is it about, you know, I have come a long way, now I'm worth this, or, you know, people of my cohort, of my level are wearing X, Y, Z watch. But it's more like I am this kind of a person. And I think that is the way that actually Titan, a lot of premiumization of Titan is along that. So uh, we have sub-brands, for example, Raga. Raga is a sub-brand of Titan that has tremendous appeal among women in India. And it comes from the fact, so cost of price is actually not so prominent. It is that it is a certain ethos. It is a certain beauty, a sense of uh, femininity, which is not a very soft kind of femininity. It is actually a very uh, strong and self-expressive femininity. And Raga is sitting right there. And uh, it is a, the kind of um, price points we are able to get in Raga is also quite interesting, quite high, because that Raga customer buys into the self-expression um, mode that Raga uh, invokes in her. I'm the Raga woman and I have this combination of beauty and strength in me and I want to express myself. So Raga is an example, Edge is an example, Octane is an example, uh, Xylus is another brand which is you know or, or Swiss made, it's brand owned by Titan, a lot of people who use Xylus because it stands for a certain emotive value of design and the way it comes together. There, so the, the long and short of it, Vinay, is that uh, if you look at the emotional positioning and how different brand, even there may be two brands exactly at the same price point, but they're appealing to different parts of your brain. And they're saying one is evoking maybe uh, a more sporty angle, one is emoti uh, evoking a more dressy angle. And I see why I would buy, I mean, one is that I am, say a raga type of consumer and I'm, I'm constantly buying raga. The other is that at sometimes I am in a raga mood or that's my uh, what I want to express, but sometimes I want to express something else because there are many me's within me. And these are the layers that brands actually use. And certainly we in Titan in watches, uh, we have a whole portfolio of brands and we have sub brands and a lot of this is coming from uh, consumers, the insight that consumers are have uh, that we have of consumers that is going deeper into their emotional needs. Right. One of the things that intrigues me is, I mean, look, Titan at one point of time was almost the timekeeper to the nation. I mean, everybody looked at Titan to keep their time and to manage things. Uh, and then, of course, the world changed, everything changed, and the company evolved to, you know, making Titan a brand which is aspirational. Uh, I mean, even the company started calling itself watchables and wearables. It's not just about watch. It's not about just what, looking at the time. And now, because of pandemic, you mentioned yourself, uh, you know, just a short while back that people have become very fitness conscious. And there are a lot of these wearables which are fitness devices that people are actively using. All of us are using, I'm using, everyone's using. Now, in your own world, uh, does this, uh, you know, it's a very serious evolution from being timekeeper to becoming aspirational to becoming a little bit of a, you know, kind of a jewelry equivalent and now becoming almost as if a health accessory uh, organization, because that's a big growing segment. Uh, does it is do you guys see it as a glass half full or the glass half empty that we've gone into a completely new segment? I mean, you're almost now providing health services to people on the go. I mean, I can check my BP, I can check my pulse, I can check my various other parameters uh, on my on my wearable. So, is the fundamental character of Titan evolving a good thing, or is it something that you worry about that it is taking away from the legacy? Because you're not. I mean, nobody would have imagined Titan being uh, you know a, a, a front player in providing health service wearables. I mean, that's not something we would have thought of say ten years ago. Now it's a reality. Does that look like a glass half full to you or glass half empty to you? I think it's an opportunity of a lifetime. And, you know, in the first uh, wave of pandemic, there was a word that was used a lot, which I'm not hearing this as much. The word pivot. So a lot of companies, ah, we are pivoting, you know, I mean, bunches of companies pivoted to making masks, but that's one level of pivot. But I, I do think that this is the opportunity of a lifetime. To transform ourselves, uh, see, one of the things is that we can say we were a watches company, we are a watches and wearables company, but 
at the heart of it is that we were always a consumer company and we always appealed to i would say the vast indian middle and upper middle class middle upper middle we are not in some high fi premium nor are we you know so this the changing evolving needs of this consumer base is actually helping us evolve learn new things become more relevant and useful for the, for the consumer i think that's a very big plus so i mean right now i'm wearing uh, the fast track reflex 3 and you know it it of course happens to match what i'm doing so it's also doing you know the the self expressive the matchy matchy thing you know and it's also feminine it's a nice color it goes with what i'm wearing it goes with me but in this is there with me 24/7 yeah. i'm seeing how many steps i'm seeing my heart rate there are times when and i'm just you know it's a, it's a bit of a personal anecdote almost bordering on a joke before i go into a big meeting and i'm really prepared i check is my heart beat okay should i take a few more you know deep breaths before i go in it is actually a val- invaluable companion in my life uh it gives me my sleep metrics again you know there are days like tomorrow morning i have a morning flight and there are days i i lose my sleep on the night because i'm thinking about how i will wake up in the morning i think there are a lot of people and this gives you things like yeah your sleep is this is the quality you should do this it's not like we don't know we all know what is good for us we know that we need to walk how many steps we know what we need to do in terms it's just that this device is now a catalyst it's a companion and that is a huge plus for me so yes watches has their own role wearables smart watches smart bands have a additional added uh, you know accentuated role and it is um, it's something that i think like i said i'm really very grateful that this pivot has happened and that we are gathering and lot of momentum in this we are one of the big players we have very very ambitious plans going ahead so and it also gives everybody in the division something new to learn like starting from the sales representative at the store who's now learned something about a new category you know he or she may have been selling watches for for a long time but now you need to know you need to know how to sync you need to know what is the app you need to know the tech details it's just you know all if you are a learning organization because of this intervention So and that's I, great so i mean it it's a uh, it's maybe a little naughty to say the way i'll put this question but look you you are currently suparna mitra is the ceo of the watches and wearables division uh, is do you guys now distinguish between watches and wearables because soon it will all be wearables i guess there will be no real watches division right is that fair way to look at it because ultimately it is now more about wearables and not so much about watches so uh, the wearables growth is of course monumental but the base of watches is still very large so it will remain watches and wearables maybe in sometimes it will become wearables and watches but i do think watch and i'll tell you why i think watches will continue is because there is a cert in india there is always an aspiring segment and they are always coming into the market they are coming you know one of our brand sonata is like a uh, it's an economy brand and actually converts the unbranded to the branded and we find huge numbers of people who come in and who are this sonata is their first branded watch and uh, it's it's a very big thing so i i think it will be some time before it becomes only wearables like i said the base of watches is huge and also vinay it also depends on the ingenuity and the desire of the marketer of the company to arrive at newer and newer reasons to give to the consumer so that they buy watches apart from the reasons that they have for buying wearables and you know the examples i gave say an edge mechanical or a raga these are good examples you know those needs will never go out right some new needs have come in but the old needs will remain right before i wrap up one other curiosity question i had what was i mean is titan pay a success do you think that's a success story or do you think there's still a lot of headroom for it to grow because that's actually getting into a space which is you know which of course is a sometimes a natural extension of what you do Uh, and maybe a sign of the kind of times that we are living in where you need to have these uh, you know add-ons which consumers need but would you call titan pay a success or do you think that's something that you would uh, need more work on 
it is it is a need of the times it is a success uh, having said that payment is a it's also an industry that has a lot of regulatory and other changes that are happening so uh, one has to keep up one has to constantly uh, remain uh, within the ambit of the regulatory authorities because it's payment right it's it's money but from a from a idea point of view you know contactless payments has gone through the roof and to be able to be hands free and have the contactless payment option is a very very good uh, insight it's a brilliant piece of consumer insighting and actually the timing of titan pay also worked out really well i mean honestly we've been working on it for a while uh, with uh, sbi and yono but the timing happened just after covid so it worked out well so payment is is a very interesting um, uh, use case and an interesting proposition it needs constant work it's not a it's not something that has become so big or exploded so much because of many other uh, uh, you know conditions that need to be satisfied so that's something that you'll stay with i mean it's not something that you're intending to get out of in that sense no. right because i mean payments is a is a crowded market everybody wants to get into it and more and more players are getting into it everybody's finding your customized vehicles uh before i wrap up one one last question i mean now uh, i think the country and pretty much the world has figured out how to deal with the pandemic i think i think people have initially you had a situation where either were people completely careless or completely paranoid and you never had somebody in between but i think the lessons have taught us that if you're uh, practically uh, you know you use common sense and you have a practical approach towards how to handle it you can possibly do it and of course as vaccination speed goes up uh you may have a much better situation going forward so if from that point of view do say uh, you know decisions like yours look at the coming year with some bit of optimism knowing fully well that we burnt our fingers once thinking that the first once once the first wave ended that everything is going to be fine and we we burnt our fingers very badly now with the talk of third wave or fourth wave or spanish flu equivalent discussions that keep happening does that make you change the way you would look at your next financials or a couple of financials or you think that the worst is over and we should be on a fairly consistent uh, plane now going forward so vinay uh, honestly nobody knows right and i really believe in focusing on things that one can control because there are things that one cannot control and that is what will happen we need to be prepared we need to have the plan a plan b on what we are doing we are of course taking extraordinary measures for safety in our in our own ecosystem in our factory stores etc and also in with our customers and um, that and of course like you mentioned the overall vaccination etc is giving a certain sense that um, there will be you know because in between wave 1 and wave 2 there was nothing that had changed there was no real vaccination is still at a very infant stage whereas now people have understood and realized that they they can do this you know public behavior is difficult to predict public memory is notoriously short two months back people were you know doing all kinds of they were talking to absolute strangers and saying can i get oxygen but you know how it is now i'm not saying yeah i'm not passing any judgment it is the way it is this is this this is what it is right uh, i think i would i concentrate on what are the things that we can do as a business that will a you know that is on innovation so we give newer and newer reasons for people to come in b on efficiency on uh, execution on safety on planning i think i think the first wave also helped us do a lot of soul searching on because you know we our division is 34 years old and so we've been doing things for three decades in a certain way and a complete halt actually made us stop and think why are we doing it this way is there a better way of doing you know any particular activity certainly digital uh, digital the digitalization of many processes and many other things have helped us learn that there are a uh, newer more efficient ways of doing it for example i mean it's a i tell my team often that if we were to start this business today how would we structure ourselves how would those processes be what would serve our customers best now now i'm not saying that we will uh, you know that is the reality today the reality is that we are what we are but this allows us to be to think unfettered on what the future can hold so i am very very confident and very um bullish 
about not just recovery, but also about this whole whatever has happened as a huge chance given for many of us to reloc and to re-architect ourselves, to reimagine ourselves and uh, really craft a new future uh, for you know the next four or five years, which is going to be really, really exciting. Right. So on that very positive uh, note, uh, Suparna, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a great learning, uh, you know, last half an hour for me. And I'm hoping that everyone else who watches it will would have learned a thing or two about how the watches and wearable industry works and it's fighting its way through. Uh, and I wish you and Titan all the smiles uh, and may you continue to go well. Thank you very much, uh, Suparna, for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vinay. It was, it was lovely talking. It was really enjoyable talking to you.